Okay, Pete, I need some help. Um, I can sort of kind of sprint, especially against tired spinners, but I don't, against real spinners, it's a totally different level. So what we did is we went out and we recorded both of us sprinting um, to try to get some tips about how I and everyone else could sprint better and put out what I think you did 1800 watts and peak power and yeah and uh, it sounds like I every time we talk to you you know what you should be doing it's just how can we execute on those right yeah, exactly so let's take a look at your sprint your setup is pretty good you know the pieces that you need to do you know the circle of power you know that um, all the energy is kind of anchoring from your bars and your hips um, it's just how do we make that happen uh, I, I think one of the main main culprits of your of your sprint is that your setup is uh, too fast. You're not, you're not putting enough effort into your actual setup. So explain that. How do you set up a sprint? So it's kind of the same way as if you were going to, uh, pick up a deadlift bar, you know, you actually, you don't just walk up, grab it, lift it over your head. You, uh, put some tension into your body. You hinge at the hips, you anchor everything in, you grab the bar. And so there's tension in your whole body in your, in your hands in your arms in your chest and your back into your hips. And then you lift up the bar. Yeah, I, I definitely go from seated to sprint immediately. So what you're saying is from seated, come up, get in the position, lock my core, lock everything, and then try to snap the yep. the, the crank arm off. <laughs> exactly. And once you're in that position, then you're ready. You know, you can you can just light. It's like lighting a firework. You snap that crank arm off. And if I don't do that, what you see that I have is my hips kind of go um, loosey goosey. Yeah, it, it, there's like a decoupling between the front of you and the rear of you. And um, that's where if when your hips are anchored like that, you can just put so much power into the pedals and you can pull really hard into your body from the handlebars. Yeah, so we've talked about this where like the circle of power at the, the front. So with your arms, I'm holding onto both handlebars and um, tension through my chest and my neck, but then it's leaving me kind of after my rib cage, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm losing power there. Yeah. And, and what we realized is that, um, when you, you, you do a great job of pulling the handlebars apart, getting your elbows going, um, the chest engaged, um, but you're not quite hinged far enough forward at this view. Um, I'm, my back's almost flat and you're, you can kind of see the chest, see your front of your Jersey just a little bit. And, um, that's not pushing your hips far enough back to really hinge and have the core engaged with that, um, forward sp leaning sprint, right? And a lot of that has to do with where I put my hands on the handlebars. So yep. you can see I, I put them too low because I'm thinking more pulling up. Mm -hmm. where Pete, you're more up pretty forward when you're pulling back yep. in. And that I, I think that too, that engages your lats because your lats are pretty, should be tense. And Yeah, it's, that right? it's most of your lats, right? It's like your whole back. Um, and we didn't know it until we watched the video, but your hands are really on those flat bars. And I think we've always told you pull into your pedal stroke, which makes sense. That's why you are pulling up where if you look, it looks like my hands are really pulling into my hips, um, which is kind of that different trajectory. Yeah. Um, another thing is that if you look from the, the rear, um, my sway and my rhythm is awkward. And I think this is, I do, I do, it's a frantic sprint. <laughs> I think I'm not <laughs> the only one who does this. Yeah. But you're, a, you have a much more um, sine wave kind of like rhythm where sometimes uh, for me, the, Sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. How important is that? Yeah, and the timing is probably the most important thing overall. Um, that's that's one of the great things is you're putting out a lot of power. It's just how much of that power is getting into your pedals and into the tires and making you sprint forward. It's probably like 4,000 watts. <laughs> it's 4,000 watts. Easier. Just all getting lost. <laughs> uh, and, and the timing, definitely watching the video, your timing, you do get the timing correct sometimes. And you can really watch how the video does a great job of showing you actually sprinting forward. And then you'll kind of lose it over the next couple pedal strokes. Yeah. It, <laughs> the hard part is, is that the, the tension through the pedals changes as you're, as you're sprinting. Mm -hmm. So as tension like comes and goes, there's like a sweet spot where I'm okay. And then it, I, I, I'm not good at the other parts. How do you fix that? Well, it's, it's two things. Uh, we, we did realize making this video that the sprint, uh, the the duration of the sprint, it changes the whole time during it. So if you're sprinting for 10 seconds, the first three seconds is different than the middle three seconds, which is different than the final three seconds. And staying on top of the timing and like the metronomic swaying of your bike and making sure everything is anchored, um, the timing changes and the force changes. So the way to... Um, capitalize on all of that is if you're in the perfect position and everything's anchored, um, you really just speed everything up and pull with, uh, 
greater force at the beginning and less force over the course of the sprint. That's a lot to take in in one go. Yeah, but so, uh, <laughs> so what people might be able to do too is maybe practice with uh, in a smaller gear mm -hmm. to get the rhythm right mm -hmm. and and go through that continuum. Exactly, and and break up break apart a sprint so that you're really only worried about the first few seconds, right? Like if we could get your first three seconds totally dialed, don't you think you could carry that momentum further into the sprint over time? Yeah. So, um, Let's go through everything again. So what I need to do is, one, set up for the sprint correctly. Mm -hmm. So get in, lock everything out, lock my lats, my core, my back. Two, get my hand position at a point where I'm pulling in, not up. Yep. Which is back into your hips, right? Like into yourself is in, what you're pulling. Into yourself. And now I'm also going to be pulling up on the hand, the same hand. So if my left pedal stroke goes down, my left hand's going to pull up. Well, into you, right? Into me. Sorry. Yep. Not pull up. Yeah, into not, me. Yep. And you're going to be hinged more so that your, your yep. anchor point is going to really be able to pull your hands into those hips. And I'll be more arrow. And the, the, I think the cue for me to do that is to drop my elbows. Yeah, drop your elbows and push your butt back a little bit. Looking at the rear, your saddle is is looks a little further away um, from the rear of your legs. Like mm -hmm. if your nose of your saddle is kind of brushing against your hamstrings, that's always good cue. That means you're far enough back that your back probably is flat. Yep. And the next thing is to have solid hips while I'm sprinting. And to maybe practice this where it's not an all out effort, pretty 80, 90%. Yeah. Because you still have to feel it like a sprint, mm -hmm. but don't be less frantic and kind of build into that. Exactly. And and starting at 50% sprints are great. Like you should do a ton of those, right? Like if we, if we get you in the correct position and we start giving you 600 or 800 watt sprints, you can knock those out and do them correctly and teach those neuromuscular patterns that are going to allow you to do these at full speed. Yeah, it's hard to, well, I think a lot of people don't practice this, and it's hard to get this at full speed in a race, get oh, yeah, it right. It's impossible, yeah. right? Like, especially without practicing. And you're tired, and yeah. you're scared, or it, adrenaline is huge. Yeah. So one other thing happened during this, and um, it's actually made me a little timid since we've done this, but my chain <laughs> slipped off. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> my chain slipped off while I was sprinting. Um, but you saved it. I saved it. <laughs> But uh, that it's hard to snap now. Um, yeah, makes you worried, right? I'm I'm totally worried. Uh, I we think I it looks like I bent the front chain ring when I did it, mm -hmm. and we were um, we were doing low cadence, high force drills. Mm -hmm. I now highly don't recommend those <laughs> drills um, because of that sort of thing. So I think I should be safe now, sprinting from a. Um, a higher RPM at a lower uh, wattage. I was like fifty three eleven and just trying to handle it, like yeah, you trying just, to bend it. Yeah, trying to bend your bend your crank arm. And yeah, it, it, things happen. Um, but I would say once we once we kind of knock out those few things that you need, like I can't wait to go out again and, and see what happens. Yeah, we'll get the 1,500 for five seconds. Yeah, that's the goal, that's, right? That's the goal. If and that could happen. Think how many races you'd win. Yeah, a lot more than I do, <laughs> do now. All right, thank you, Pete. Yeah, for sure. I'm Nate. And I'm Pete. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Thumb wrestle. One, two, three, four. I declare thumb war. Yours is so long.